USS Ares Hydrofoil Museum. I'm Elliot James and I'll be your docent on this virtual tour. Today we're going to take a look at the USS Ares. This is the reason that we have a hydrofoil museum. The USS Ares is a PHM, a Patrol Hydrofoil Missile, PHM-3 class ship. Our tour to the inside of the ship will start here where the 76 millimeter gun used to be. We've installed a hatch to make egress easier. We're going to descend this staircase into the magazine. This is where the ammunition and arms were kept aboard the ship. The controls up here are for the front foil. This is a manual override. All the hydraulics. Small arms cabinets. These are the magazine racks that kept the large shelves. Beneath the magazine is the dry store and bow thruster room. The clicking you hear are turtles and fish as they feed on algae and fresh water of the Gasconade River that we're in. Up in the bow, this is the bow thruster tube. And the hydraulic motor that powers the propeller within the tube. The bow thruster helps maneuvering at slow speeds while docking. Bilge pump. various storage. Moving aft from the magazine, we enter the crew mess. Conveniences, microwave, coffee machine, milk dispenser, and ice maker. On the starboard side is the stainless steel galley, complete with grill, griddle, stove top, oven, freezers, refrigerators, even a mixer. Moving aft, sample of lunch menus we found in the galley. Just off the mess on the starboard side is the officer's quarters. Two stationary bunks one fold-down bunk, and a convertible couch. Up to four people could stay in here, although it was normally for three. Has its own lavatory. We move back into the crew mess, and we turn once again through a bulkhead aft to a companion way, where I'm still on the starboard side, just behind the officer stateroom is the chief petty officer stateroom. There are four bunks in here also. The 
boats get just a little bit smaller, the lower the pay grade. Coming back, the companion way. On the port side is the head. Two lavatories, two urinals, and two toilets. As well as one shower. Back out the companion way. Turning once again aft, we go by the water heater. And we go through another watertight bulkhead. With the remainder of the crude berthing. On the port side, we have run room with three bunks. It originally had six, but we removed three so that we could gain access to some water systems. Underneath these hatches are the fresh water tanks. Moving through the companion way to the starboard side, we come to another bunk room with three more bunks. As you can see, these bunks are smaller yet. And finally, all the way to the starboard side of the vessel, we come to the last three bunks. We retrace our steps, go back over to the port side of the ship. We go into EOS, the engineering operating station. Through yet again, another bulk, watertight bulkhead. It was here that all the engineering capabilities of the ship were monitored. A lot of the controls are gone now, but the basic ones are still here. Once again, still on the port side. Moving into auxiliary machinery room number two. To our left is the turbine room. This is where the LM2500 that powers the water jet that flies the ship was kept. We have a fuel cleaning station. And we have a sewage treatment plant. And just after that, we have the air conditioning plant, HVAC. Here we see a number of hydraulic lines. These are for the actuation of the aft struts and foils. This is the turbine gearbox. And then we move into the diesel pump room. It's called this because one, it's got the diesel engines that provide hellborn power, as well as the pump driven by the foil borne gearbox. This Y is where water is drawn up from the bottom of the rear strut and pushed through the water pump and out the back of the ship, propelling it.
On the port side, we have an 8V331 TC80 series engine. This engine was one that was used in Pegasus, the original PHM. Moving farther aft, the last watertight bulkhead into machinery room number three. And electrical services in this room. And this is where the water jet propulsors for the Hellborn propulsors are. For the Hellborn propulsion. And in this space used to be 250 kW SSPU, that's ship service power unit, that provided electrical and hydraulic power. This was a turbine unit at the time. We found these, this to be too inefficient. And we've replaced it with 150 kW diesel gen set. that we can much better afford to run. Diesel gen sets, diesel reset the gen sets, are much more efficient at less than full load. And a significant portion of the time, generators are running at less than full load. Very back ship, hydraulics for steering, these are the steering and actuators and reversing buckets. And then we move forward on the starboard side, back into machinery room, or the diesel pump room. We move forward on the starboard side back to the diesel pump room where we see the starboard MTU and this one is an 8V331 TC81 it's a newer series and this engine was used in the PHM3 class ships which were all the PHMs except for Pegasus Oilborne gearbox. Well, it was one of four hydraulic pumps mounted to the foilborne gear, foil gearbox. Four hydraulic pumps mounted to the foilborne gearbox, as well as two to each of the turbine generators. Moving forward on the starboard side into machinery room number two. We can see the water treatment plant. And the fuel stripping station. Moving forward from machinery room number two on the starboard side, we enter the crew storeroom. This space we use as a maintenance shack. It has an engineering locker for engineering gear, device, table, working on things. And when we were in South Carolina, in Charleston at the old naval shipyard that had recently closed, we acquired numerous spares from all the other ships that were either being scrapped or taken apart. We move forward back into the companionway 
And now we're back into the cruise compartments. Next, we go up. Into the main passageway. On the port side, we go into an area that was reserved for the computer control systems, including the ACS, the automatic control system. And this is the computer that was used to fly the ship. And we come to the CO's stateroom. This is where the captain slept. The one and only porthole. He had his own lavatory. It was small, but efficient. We move forward from the main companionway, or from the... Gap on the weather deck. We installed this staircase to help get tours through. On the aft deck, in place of the harpoon missiles, we put a generator to provide us our electricity for our lights and operating, as well as a hydraulic crane to help lift equipment on and off. On the starboard side, we have a place where the launch was kept and a davit that was used to set it in the water and we end up back at the bow.